And uh, this morning we're going to be talking about um, safe spaces for men. Many times you hear of all these women groups and all these conventions and gatherings. They're trying to talk about this and that, places for them to open up and share about, you know, the things that they're going through, their troubles. And we don't seem to have any for the men. So the discussion today we're going to have is, are there safe spaces for men? Do we need them? Or are they just something that we shouldn't even think about? That is the discussion we're having uh, today on Take Note. And guess what? You can join in our conversation. You go to Twitter and Facebook. The hashtag is Morning at NTV and share your thoughts as well. Uh, Peter Gaga is meant to join us. He's running a little bit late, but hopefully we can, uh, he will join us a little bit later on. But we have um, Patrick Turinawe, who is here with us. He's um, a lawyer. And who better have this chat with than? Uh, people that know things to do with you lawyers know these things <laughs> I don't know how you get to know them but you know them anyway good morning Peter uh, um, sorry Patrick uh, thank you David good morning uh, safe spaces yours. for men the women yeah you know you have, you have a madame at home you've had her go for those groups I don't, I don't even know how they come up with these groups but every single village every single um, the street has a certain gathering for women where they can go and you know talk about their troubles in marriage in life with children the men we don't seem to have that do we need it uh, it's uh, a trend that is emerging uh, I've seen a number of uh, fellowships or such spaces, as you may call them. I personally belong to one of them. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. And, um, in the bar or in the church? <laughs> no, in the church. <laughs> <laughs> and it's um, with uh, mainly some young uh, married men. Every month we make sure that uh, we meet together and... Uh, you know, get and to open talk. up and talk. Exactly. But but y y you see, Patrick, the talk, men talking is it's it's not bad. It's it's just not something that we know of to be an ideal situation for a man to wake up one morning or one evening and go gather up with other men and share about the troubles he's having with himself or the family. It's 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 it's, yeah. it's not our thing. So yeah. uh, where is this coming from now? It's uh. There are very few, there are very few people or men who are, are raised to be talkers, to talk about their feelings, to talk about their thoughts or things that directly affect them, especially uh, talking about them with many others. And, uh, but there are also very many challenges uh, that men face and uh, there's no one to talk to. You're either going to keep it by yourself, struggle with it or, you know, get a way of talking about it and I think because of the enormous challenges that uh, men are facing whether at a family level whether in their career you get to find other men or colleagues who are able to share their experiences who are able to share some of the challenges and uh, the more you talk about it you realize that this is not you alone and uh, there's probably a solution. There's advice that some people can offer. I have a colleague who once told me that, you know, we, there are very many challenges and experiences that we go through as individuals. But you do not have to go through every challenge. Right. And uh, the benefit of getting to share or talk about it with someone else is that you'll get a piece of advice that will probably protect you from going through some of the challenges. It is inevitable that you will go through your own challenges. If you can avoid some, why not? Right, uh, learning from other people's mm. mistakes. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, the, new, the, uh, the elders, I, I don't think they're impressed. I don't think they're happy with us. Um, they should be out there saying, well, the new generation, what kind of men are we raising? Men that, you know, can't deal with issues on their own. Uh, men, you don't wake up in the morning and go share whatever is bothering you with other men. And we understand, yes, it's a new generation. It's, but is, is, is it something that now men we should think about so much and not bottle up things and, and, and share? Many will say, well, that, that's a woman thing. Women, women go and share. They, they talk. They don't even need to have a certain fellowship anywhere. They just need to sit at a veranda and talk. But is it something that now we should 
be thinking about so much as men and not bottle up things and look for fellowships where we can gather and share? Uh, it's, uh, it's something that we, we think we should be thinking about and talking about, but we also have to be very careful because uh, influence can be is double-edged. There can be a positive influence, there can be a negative influence. So whichever, whichever fellowships or gatherings that one engages in, they have to be very cautious because it can be either way. You can, you know, so it's something that one has to be cautious about. The difference with the older generation, um, I think it is very hard to compare. The older generation had a very a clear sense of mentorship. Men were raised by their fathers. You know, the, all the community, people were responsible. It's a, a son grew up closely with their father. If he was a herdsman, they did everything together. They went hunting together. They, you know, they explored together. They adventured together. And the ladies were also with the mothers or the aunties. So all this kind of thing. But in our generation, the times have changed. Uh, people are living on different continents. Uh, parent here, parent. So different cities. So. And the mentorship has not been deliberate. So our circumstances, our challenges are likely to be very different. Our solutions will be different. Mm. Ah, thank you. Um, Peter just joined us. Um, Peter is the right guy to have here because he hosts a bunch of men and they talk about things. Um, sometimes very fantastic. Uh, yeah. <laughs> sometimes I'm watching that show and I'm like, good lord. Um, Peter is 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 our, our generation is um, as 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 Telly Patrick. Uh, uh, the, the older guys must be very disappointed in us, the men these days. Um, now we're looking for safe spaces. It's, it's well, I'll tell you what. Um, safe spaces are actually a very grey area because um, the truth be told, um, you've talked a lot about how our parents used to be the older generation. They were strong. Okay, they w were rather deemed as strong, but I think they didn't have a safe space to go to. That notwithstanding, um, nowadays a lot of men are using safe spaces as an escape route. When the pressure is on, I can't take it, I go to a safe space. I can spend the night in a bar because it is my safe space. I can hang out with my friends because it's my safe space. So I think it, it's a very gray area and it's at risk of being just, you know, going the complete opposite side. However, um, You've talked about the kind of people we associate with. Um, Shakespeare said, show me your friends, I tell you who you are. I also tell people, if your friends, if five of your friends are idiots, guess who the sixth idiot is? <laughs> <laughs> <Okay. laughs> so, who are the people we associate with? Because yeah. you see, having a safe space may not necessarily be, uh, mean getting away. I think as a man, you're meant to take the problems head on. Deal with them, because there'll always be issues, okay? We are having this trend of men now committing suicide because they can no longer stomach everything. They just need to let it out. For us women, it's totally different. And I think that's why um, the producer has just said, you are going to represent the voice of the women in the, in, in, on the table. For us, we always open up. I face an issue, I'm with my girlfriend on phone. I have an issue, if not my sister, then my mother. Like we have a strong support system around us and we are okay opening up. So I feel like Patrick here has a totally different maybe view to things. He's totally open to men now embracing safe spaces to open up about the issues but you're on this other side the old school guy <laughs> saying that men need to face on the issues head on where is that coming from don't you think times are changing parenting like he said is now you know becoming quite you know a problematic area parents no longer have you know that time to spend with their children like it used to be days back I'll tell you what um, I kind of agree with what Patrick is saying and I'll tell you where I do um, first of all what has happened is with every generation, we, we make certain things permissible. One of the reasons why parenting is, is because we are letting kids get away with so much. I mean, nowadays you see it in the supermarket. A kid wants a chocolate, they want a chocolate. They even have the audacity, I witnessed this, a child kicking his mother on the shin because his mom said, no, you cannot get the chocolate. And the child throws a tantrum. Some of us could never do that. I mean, it was, you couldn't even imagine it. 
Now, um, if you look at where we came from, we had peer groups, and peer groups all had mentors. So um, uh, one of the challenges a lot of um, men have is there's nobody to teach men how to be men. We figure it out as we, we go along. And I always say um, one of our biggest challenges is that a lot of men are being raised by women. And a woman cannot teach a man to be a man because a woman has never been a man. You know? So this is a situation where we're having men who don't know how to be men. So when the going gets tough, they reach the wall, they just decide, you know what, I'm sorry, can't go anymore, I'm taking my life. Now, where there were peer groups, you had um, a set of people who would be with you. When I was young, if either of my brothers did anything wrong, my dad would kill all of us. Because if you cannot see your brother messing up, and you say, hey, stand no, watch no, yeah, watch and it's not my business. Yeah. It was your business. We were everybody's keeper. So when you'd see your brother messing up, you'd be the first person to tell him, hey, you know what, you need to stop that. Yeah, I'm not going to get bitten for this, man. For this, yes. But OK, then we didn't get it. But now I get it. Because nowadays, you've got your close friends, and you see somebody's messing up. Ah, None of my business. Somebody's having issues in their marriage. None of my business. Mm. Somebody's children are misbehaving. I mean, when you were kids, you, you couldn't misbehave. Even if this person didn't know you, they would deal with you and for ask you, where do you live? Then take you home and, and you're yeah, dealt with. And dealt with yeah. So yeah. Um, I think our society is fractured and it's taking a huge toll on us. Now, where we talk about safe spaces, um, we are in a situation where now, because society is fractured, because we don't have support systems, I look for that small space of my own. And that's why alcoholism is on the rise. Um, a lot of people take to the bottle as uh, a, a way to, to get out. I mean, there are people who go out looking for prostitutes because they say, I just need a, a release, you know, because that way I feel, I feel better. And uh, we are building ourselves into small cocoons because it's my safe space. So when things are not uh, working my way, I, I coil up. But you cannot handle all your issues on your own. You need friends, you need a support system, whether it's family or at least a close group of reliable people yeah, right. who can support you. Um, I, I was talking to a friend of mine yesterday, and we, uh, as, as soon as I hinted at spaces, he told me, look here, men, your only fellowship is your bank account. Look at it. <laughs> if, if, if it is not good, yeah. Yes, you need fellowship and you need to go make money. <laughs> yes. That's all you need. Mm -hmm. Men will, uh, he seemed to suggest that all the problems men have mm -hmm. can be sorted as long as your bank account is looking good. Is that the reality though, Patrick? Um. <laughs> 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 is it all about um, the, the ones? Uh, how big the ones I, I doubt it's, uh, it's the mindset. You know, uh, people have different uh, ideologies. It's, it's uh, their mindset, and uh, they will probably justify it. But there are also very many men with, uh, with uh, very huge uh, uh, wallets and um, a heavy bank account, but very unhappy or frustrated, or they also have issues to deal with. So it's, it's not uh, money is just something to facilitate how you, you, know, you, you live. It's, it, it's not the core. It's not, uh, but I also wanted to add to what um, Peter was saying. Uh, one of the things that we have to be careful with is that it has to be a deliberate effort. These men need to know what exactly they want. Because uh, I think one of uh, Peter's hesitations was that it, will, it can go either way. You can have a bad influence and it will just take you down the drain. So one has to be very deliberate, knowing that this kind of influence, this kind of peers, this kind of support system, will help me achieve what I want. Mm. But what exactly do I want? Do I know that? Right there, Patrick, because you, you see, this is, this is the problem we, we've had with, and, and, and I know you, you have probably had your friends complaining about it, or you have faced it on as well. The ladies end up talking to their friends or their mothers or sisters, and it's not a guarantee that they're talking to the right people. Mm. So the question is, are we, yes, we want to open up, but are we opening up the right people? Are we going to be opening up to the right people? And how do you know that you're opening up to the right person right. Mm. to get the right advice to whatever it is that you're dealing with? Okay, if I may just go back to also the issue of money. Now, 
<laughs> we live in a very commercialized society. Yeah, you know, that's and, true. Um, success is looked at by how many cars do you have, yeah. the size of your house. I mean, we've talked about the fat wallets, UK. Okay? Um, the reality is that, if I may go biblical, um, money answers all things. Okay? Okay. Money is a good thing. But just as Patrick has said, it actually is a tool. Okay, it's not the thing. It is a tool that should be used. So is money good? It is very good. Okay, because you'd rather have money. <laughs> and because the problems you have when you have money are much better problems than the ones you have when you don't have money. So it's, in, it's important to have it. However, it's important to be in the right mindset to know that um, I'm not just going to look for money because the day you get it, then what? What are you going to do? You have to be in a situation where you say, okay, I need money as a tool to sort A, B, C, D, to improve your life, improve the lives of your loved ones. Because that way, there's more satisfaction when you can be able to give, okay? And provide. Than, and provide, yes. Yeah. Rather than be in a situation where it's just about me, having my money, my money, my money. It's about sharing. Right, yeah. right. And, and, and just going back to that, and you guys did allude to the fact that it's thanks to poor parenting that we are in you know the space that we are right in right now and and someone would say then how do we sort out the issue because you did mention that we are having single parents parents of boys and a mother can never teach a boy how to become a man so where do we sort out that gap that is already existing in society because in the olden days then you would you would know if you get a girl pregnant you're mandated to marry her straight up yeah, it was your business it was your business yeah. it, you would take responsibility mm -hmm. but now we are having a crop of men who think I can actually get away with getting a girl pregnant. So how do we do we do we sort out that you know fabric, moral fabric that's pretty much decayed, so to speak, Patrick? Where do we start? Um, for I have a colleague who says that uh, he has already given up with the old generation mm. because <laughs> <laughs> it may be hard to recover. Mm. But uh, either way, we, I think we need to appreciate our sense of responsibility. Uh, everyone should be responsible. Whether I am a young man, whether I am an adult, a father, everyone has to be responsible. Uh, there are those who have been raised by single mothers or even without parents. Mm. Are they going to just become reckless and do whatever? They must realize that they have a sense of responsibility and know that they need to develop a, a certain kind of man that they may have in mind. And um, the other aspect is I'm a strong advocate for mentorship. I, 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 I push, I advise and, and support the aspect for mentorship because, as I mentioned, there is much more to learn uh, from others who are probably um, more exposed than you, who are older than you, or, you know, who have some sense of some wisdom to offer. Right. And those mentors can be able to walk with you, to journey with you. But it has to be also a deliberate effort. I look out for the mentor, somebody I think that can help me journey in this, uh, in this, uh, in this life, or in terms of character, in terms of career, in terms of business, whichever, family. So it's something that I strongly advocate for. And more than the spaces for men, uh, these mentors are able to deal with you on a one on one basis. They're able to appreciate your circumstances and work with you, give you some piece of advice. Morning at NTV, if you have just joined us, um, you're a little bit late, a very interesting <laughs> conversation here. We're talking about uh, safe spaces for men. Fellowships, yes, another thing. Not scholarship, we're talking about fellowships, okay? And um, we want to find out from you, what do you think, do we men need those safe spaces? Or that's the woman thing. Uh, we're going to get into some of um, the reaction I'm getting here, very interesting um, yeah, two questions I have for the guys here. Uh, but first, we, we, we were talking about the right people to open up to. It seems to be a very important thing. So when you, when you're, because the ladies, they'll talk to their sisters, they'll give them all the, the bad and good advice sometimes. Um, but when it comes to the men, who do they open up to? Who do they talk to? Do you talk to your pastor? Do you talk to your fathers? Um, let's be honest, these days the parents don't have that much time to talk to their children, so um, we, we could blame them, but we're not going to go into the blame game. So who do, you, who do you talk to? How do you judge or choose the person that you talk to that is going to give you the right advice? I'll, I'll, I'll side a lot with what Patrick has said. Um, mentorship. 
Mentorship is a very big thing. Find somebody, and you know, a mentor doesn't necessarily have to be somebody who is rich, you yeah. know, somebody who's that. It's more about experience. Um, my daughter is 21, and um, one of the things I, I tell her is, as a parent, um, I am a forerunner. Okay, so I've made mistakes, I've done so many wrong and stupid things, but it's upon me to educate her and say, look, this is wrong. But I also tell her, if I tell you what I did, and then you go ahead and do the same thing, then it's on you. Okay. And I think it's the same thing. We need to get mentors who can open up uh, to, to you. Is there this guy in the village who has seen it all and can just tell you openly, here you've made a mistake, okay, and there you're going right. It's very important. Then also get peers. You know people who are adding value to your life, mm. and you know people who are not. One of the things I also tell people is, um, these guys called friends, they are there for a season and a reason. At every stage of life, you have to drop them. And the reality is some people say, oh, I've got some friends, but they, um, they're just, they're okay, they don't have value, but they're my friends, you know. We grew up together, we've come from far. If this person is not adding value to your life, and I say, if you're not learning from them, then, mm, Right. It's time to get new friends, you know, people you can learn from. Mm -hmm. and that is, yeah. um, some reaction here. Um, Julia says, wow, what a generation. This is a weak generation. Our parents must be so disappointed in us. Um, <laughs> Philip comes through and says, guys, let's be honest. If we start fellowships for men, we can as well be called women as well. <laughs> 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 so it, it, it yeah. seems it seems to be it it, it it all goes back to culture, you know, because we have been raised to know that you are a man, you are supposed tough. to be tough and you know work out whatever it is that you're going through, find a way. And now you're starting fellowships, uh, such a disappointment. <laughs> That's interesting, and maybe Patrick can come in on this one. A man joining a fellowship of other men, you know, maybe just to support each other, maybe financially or just socially, is that a sign of weakness? Ooh. No, I don't think so. Uh, <laughs> that sounds, sounds like a cheeky one, yeah? Yeah, it's... Uh, it's um, that's a trap, man. And that's why I was saying that uh, it's a mindset. Mm. You must know what you want. If you're going to... He has mentioned about value. What... Have you thought about the kind of value that you want? You want to expect from this crop of people. Uh, it's 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 very sad when people are so full of themselves, and uh, you think that you are going to stomach it, or you 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 can deal with it. And yet there are issues down there. Mm. Uh, it may take you five years to deal with them, and just being able to talk about it with uh, the right people it may take you months, it may take you a year. So it's a, it's a mindset, it's a mindset issue and uh, for those who are who will challenge it you must have a solution. What is the solution? What should the men be doing in order to you know, uh, to, to, to enhance their lives, right. to get better to, to, to deal with the challenges that they are they're, they're facing? Are we putting our head in the in the sun to let's, say that there are no challenges that let's talk about looking out for the right people to share your issues with for example you are a grown-up man uh, raised by a single mom you don't have the luxury of going back to your dad maybe to give you advice and guidance then how do you go about identifying the right people because you also know that um, we have quite a number of people who are great and perfect pretenders so how do you go about seeing that and just knowing this is the right person to go to Peter well um, put the person to the test um, the thing is you can fool some of the people all the time but you can't fool all the people all the time um, you will I always say when everything is good and flowery and all that we don't need people and that's a fact you need people when the tough times come now we all know that when tough times come there are very few people who stand beside you. Yeah. But you also cannot be that person who is constantly in problems, okay? Yeah. <laughs> because you become that person who everybody's like, no, not this time, not that time. Yeah. And also, we, we talk about fellowships. WhatsApp groups are fellowships, okay? But I think I get what, um, I think he's called Julius, yes. is, is saying. Yeah. Is this a gossip group? If you're in a gossip group where all you do is talk mm. about, oh, that, yeah, this, that. that. Yeah. Not adding value, okay? Yeah. Then mm. th that... 
that, that's just wrong on so many fronts. Yeah. But is this fellowship adding value? You talked about fellowships where people raise money. Um, we fight about things like interest rates at the banks, you know, they're too high and all that. Have we thought about investment groups where you come together, when you meet, talk business, share ideas? Because you know the funny thing is, nobody has a monopoly of ideas. When you talk to people, you learn other so many things. So when you're get benefiting from those fellowships, because it's not only monetary, um, is is am I getting um, ed educated? Am I getting um, social benefit? Mm -hmm. I can also look and see some. Somebody who seems to be in, in touch with to understand um, how to deal with women better than I can, I can talk to them and say, but how do you how do you manage? Of course, a guy who's going home at 6 a.m. every morning <laughs> 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 may not be <laughs> yeah, my ideal person right. to hang around with. So I just keep testing them, testing them, yeah. And then you, that's why every time you see, you get a few, drop a few, get more, drop a few. That's I, I think the guys are in trouble here because um, the ladies have chipped in as well, mm -hmm. and what they're saying is not good at all. It's it's um, just not. Um, <laughs> uh, um, <laughs> this Twitter names uh, confusing me, but at at Lanya, um, she comes and says, "I'm never dating a man who thinks that he's going to go to a fellowship to get help. That man is weak." Wow. <laughs> Your response, <laughs> Patrick? <laughs> that man is weak. Is it weakness, though? I'll, that's I'll a, tr that's I'll, a trap. I'll, I'll, no, no, I'll, I'll tell you what. Um, I understand what, in a way, what she's saying. I believe. And you're the one to because you're representing the women. Mm -hmm. And I know she must be thinking, I, I'm going for a fellowship. A man, man is going for a fellowship. What yes, kind of and, relationship and that's is what this? Saying, um, I think it, it's the the way the fellowship is positioned. Mm. Every woman needs a strong man, and the reality is, um, a man has to be strong. Um, even in the face of, of trouble, a man has to stand up and be strong. You have to be strong for your family because I always say if you bust into tears, your wife is crying, the kids are crying, <laughs> what's going to happen, okay? Um, and even uh, one of the, the, the greatest generals of, the, um, of our time, General Powell, say that as a leader, and you go into war, he said, yes, there are times you're scared, you're literally panicking, you, you don't even know whether you're going to make it through the night, but your troops who are following you ask you, are we good? And you say it with a straight face, we are good, good. good. Mm. and we are going to make it. And in your head, you're you trying to figure no it. idea. You've got no idea. So, um, fellowship, if I'm going for a business meeting, okay, it also depends on how you, you position it. Mm -hmm. If you tell your wife that, hey, you know what, I'm, I'm going for, for our for, man fellowship. Yeah. Oh. She's been like, they're going there to gossip. Okay, they, yeah, you know, yeah. They've got nothing to do. Yeah. But, and also, if she sees what comes out, because also one of the challenges we have as men is we don't tell our women enough. Okay, so I mean, I've I've come up with this great business idea, or I'm in this group, I've made some money. I should be in a position to tell my wife, yes, um, this came from this group that I'm in. Mm -hmm. Okay, so she sees the value that is coming out of it. But otherwise, you know, we also have our ego issues. You, you, yeah. you don't want to tell share it. too much. Yes, to share too much. Yeah. So she makes her own assumptions, and then you're in trouble. Um. I'm, I, I don't know. Yeah, the ladies, the, the ladies are making it very hard for me to go through this morning. Come on, you, you just slow down. It's okay. Um, uh, 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 Liz says, I think we are just trying to open up um, space for a new career. Uh, I think we're watching too many movies. And people just want to go and talk to counselors uh, because they, will, they see everyone in the movies when they're having problems, they go and talk to them. Men should just man up and not even think about fellowships. So We're the, opening way, up the women are spoken. Yeah. <laughs> Where are the men? Where are the men? <laughs> I, 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 think, I think the men, are, I, I think the men are, agree with the ladies. <laughs> they don't want to yeah. be attacked, so you they're know, like, okay, you, we'll, we'll you stay know, in this I space. Kinda think, I, I kind of know where the women are coming from because we've been raised by dads who are very traditional and strong mm. and so we have that you know orientation of what a husband ought to be because we saw how our dads operated in the home and related to our moms and how you know like you're saying if we're going to a war you have to you don't have to cry like you know your wife and your children will you have to be the pretty much the fort bearer 
pretty much and so we get into life and we go into dating expecting that even the men that we get in that space <laughs> will be like my dad my first boyfriend pretty much so where are we where are we having you know that difference between our dads and the now man I, I, I think before before they even that difference. before they, they respond i think you ladies need to be lectured on the men that you're dating in this in this new <laughs> age, in this new era we need to tell you that the men that you're dating now are, used to cry for chocolate and kick their mums because you know they want they want you these know. are the men that you're, you're dating these days so please stop expecting and too cry, much from and us cry for sugar and, and <laughs> cry for sugar and stuff like that um, yeah. I, I think this um, i don't i want to attribute it to our parents get, getting weak i'll be honest and tell you ma'am for, for example uh, the house where i was raised um i, I think ma our, our parents went through a lot that they try to see that we the children don't go through the same thing because um, if you if you hear the stories that my dad tells about his father yeah. and you see how he behaves in the house let me give you a pretty good example this is what Yusuf he says you kids here I'm telling you my father would come home and you'd literally not hear a pin drop on the floor the yeah. whole house <laughs> even just fit in the corridor he would ask who is that yes. and that all of you would up. scatter <laughs> this is a man that comes home sits and the kids come and flip from cnn to cartoon network and the man just walks away goes to his bedroom this is a man that decided you know what this is the kids tv now i'm going to buy my own tv for the bedroom and the girls still go and chase him from his bedroom and he leaves the house this is a man that sits home and as, as soon as the kids come in he's like you kids can watch your TV let me go to the bar mm -hmm. so you, you you understand it's it's a very very big disparity now the, the, the kids are growing up thinking you know what yeah. we, we we're in control yeah. so the kids are growing up weaker yet our parents didn't get it that way yeah, but, but I, I don't want to blame the parents but you understand where the, where I'm coming from yeah, with this I agree with you 100% and that's why at the beginning I see it unfortunately with every generation we drop the bar we, we make certain things more permissible mm. you've mentioned a very interesting thing and uh, that's for all the men out there you know girls marry their fathers right so if um, a, a girl was brought up and she saw her dad as a strength as, 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 as a tough guy then that's what she's going to expect because, like you said, first boyfriend. That's the first man she has been exposed to. And she expects, um, uh, what do you call it, her, 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 the man she's going to marry to be like that. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with being tough. I think we are, we, we actually have a generation of weaklings. And now we talk about um, saying, oh, that the women are taking over their, and, and all that stuff. But you see, the, the reality is women are taking over because men are not handling their, handling their business. Say that okay. again. Um, you can say that again. <laughs> 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 Okay. Uh, however, because you see, um, we we uh, I uh, I've been told that I'm and um, sometimes I think like an 80 year old. Okay, mm -hmm. but the reality is, you, you've got men who dress like women nowadays. Okay, yeah. you yeah. know, men who don't have a problem being taken care of. I believe both men and women should work, okay, and contribute together. But I have a problem with men who sit at home and let the woman go out mm -hmm. and then say, oh, she's she sat on yeah. me. Okay. Yeah. You've let yourself be sat up. Okay, so um, we need to, uh, uh, Patrick alluded to it, said, you see, also, none of us were brought up in an ideal situation. Okay, I, uh, fair enough, I didn't have a father who was, who was there to, uh, to bring me up. But inside every man, there's that male thing in you. And uh, the, it's, you know, the thing about male qualities is whether you're a lion, you're a hippo, you're, you're a monkey, you're, uh, there's, there's that thing, the, the dominance and um, aggression. Of, of the male being right. it is in you you have to go out there and and do something and one of the things I always tell people is you may not have a fancy job okay you may not have your ideal uh, house or your ideal situation but get out there and do something one thing I know is women appreciate a man who does something right. okay just Get out there and do something. Even if you bring your small caldera that has um, half a kilo of sugar, it is fine. Mm. You have done something. And as long as you're doing your best, and because you, uh, you can't lie to yourself, you're just out there, you're doing your level best, and that is what you can do, it is fine. But then now, you know, we were waiting for an ideal situation. Yeah. We're waiting till I get a, 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 a 10 million shilling a month job. Then I will. 
do but, this. But, but, but I don't know, maybe Patrick, you can get in on this one. Where is the pressure coming from? Um, I'm, I have a group. <laughs> <laughs> I have a group of girlfriends who tell me, um, and some of them unfortunately got into negative experiences, whereby they get into dating this ex-man, and this ex-man never introduces this girl to the reality, financial, his financial reality. So he fakes it all. He will go hire out a car for maybe the one year they'll be dating, and once they get into courtship, where now the realities come through, this guy pretty much you needs saw this, space. but he's here. He needs so a safe space now. Where is this pressure to, to exactly? Where is this pressure to, to 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 maybe you know look a certain way for men coming from? Why are you no longer real with the women? Because the women are not real. <laughs> <laughs> Um, that's the beginning part. And, right? and, uh, <laughs> that's your cue. That's your statement. <laughs> <laughs> you disassociated yourself. <laughs> uh, yeah. There are very, there are very many real men, and yeah. there are very many real women. That's the reality. They need don't. to have that conversation. Mm. Okay. They need. We need to tell that story. There's a lot of negativity yeah. uh, that uh, that uh, we hear a lot of negative stories. But is, it's also true that there are also very good men out there. There are very good women out there, and that story has to be told. Okay. It has to be emphasized. Okay. Um, uh, even uh, with the uh, challenges, they are they are mortal human beings. I, I told someone that before you, before I, uh, they are cr you are a Christian, you are you are a Muslim. As much as you you have all this religious belief and values, you are also a mortal person. You 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 are you are capable of making some horrible mistakes, but the the, the women you are describing and these kind of expectations. These people need to appreciate that that is why such men also need mentors. They need some positive influence in them. They need people who are going to influence their mindset. Okay. These are men that you're talking about, you are proud of, and you're, you're not proud of, but you're saying if, if at all they seek help or if they talk to a counselor, if they, then they're becoming weak. Okay. What we are saying is that as much as a man, he has articulated it very well, that, you know, men have that sense of ownership. They are strong. They are, you know, they, 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 they should be a strong character. That cannot be overemphasized. But they are also human beings. They are going to make mistakes. They are going to have a bad sense of judgment. Mm. And what we are saying is that if these men can also have positive influence, positive support, then they can be better. They can do better. They can be real. They can yes. be real. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, it's, it's something that has to be deliberate. There's, um, from the responses we have, there is critique towards it. And everything, anything has, can be critiqued. You know, okay. so if you're to listen to the critics and uh, and uh, you say, oh, I have to be, I have to be uh, <laughs> strong, or I have to appear strong, then you're going to face uh, uh, more challenges. But we have to face the the the, the elephant in the room, uh, strong on. So it's not something that I would shy away from. I would encourage every man, if at all you can get a mentor, somebody who can bring value to you, if you can get um, some positive influence that can make you better, that can bring value to you, whether in your career aspects, whether emotionally, whether in anything, it's something very important. Mm -hmm. So I, I think it's very clear where Patrick is with this whole safe space thing. He's in for it. Mm -hmm. um, we're a bit <laughs> unsure where. Uh, deliberate. <laughs> you must be deliberate. Yeah. You don't Peter, have to Peter, are, you, are, you, are you in? <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll tell you. Before I get there, just to. Um, Malala, you mentioned something about why men fake it. Some yeah. people say fake it till you make it, but you cannot fake it. Um, unfortunately, we, as I mentioned earlier, we're in a very commercialized society where success is deemed by what you can show, okay? Yet, um, success is actually a journey. Mm. I say a woman who's not ready to walk the journey with you is not your woman, okay? okay. Um, and I think men need to be in a position where it is okay to say no. 
Mm. If she's going to go, she will go. Mm. And I think the sooner she goes, the better for you. The better for you because yeah. she's not going to carry away your yeah. money. Yeah. With you. You're not going to get into debt. Yeah. You're not going to get into trouble. She has put you through enough. You can now start from there and be well. He's speaking did. from experience. Yeah, she, she, <laughs> and she did not force you. You, you, yeah. you, had, the, you yeah. had the chance you went in to say no. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You just did say no. Mm. So yeah. we also should learn to say no and be able to block out and say, all right, let, let, whoever wants to laugh, let them laugh. Mm. Yeah. Whoever wants to say that. Mm. Safe spaces. Um, I sit on the fence, and I'll tell you why. Um, I think safe spaces can be abused okay. because I can always turn to a drink, I can always turn to a bar, I can always turn to doing the wrong thing because it's my safe space. However, I think it's important for men to commune, okay, to, to regularly commune because these are things that we used to do. These are things that our our fathers, that's the way they were brought up. They were peer groups. And your peers were people you grew up with and literally died with. Right. Yes, you, those are the people you would bury or who would bury you. So you need a support group, but it has to be a beneficial support group. There must be tangible. Okay. Patrick Turinawe and Peter Gaga, thank you very much. I look forward, we should thank have you. this conversation. You, you should yes, uh, yes, put it yes, on yes. the men. This is, yes. a very, <laughs> this is a very, a, a men yes. getting weaker. We're raising yes. a weaker generation. That should be a very interesting topic. Mm -hmm. um, Peter Gaga, you know him from the men. He's, yeah, the guy that talks about all the issues that we should be having in these safe spaces, but they do it on TV. <laughs> and um, uh, Patrick, thank you very much for joining us. If you have yeah, just joined fine. us, the conversation today is pretty simple. Men, do we need those safe spaces, the fellowships, or it's just a gossip place? Uh, men have now joined the, the gossip club. They want to find a place to gossip as well. Keep the conversation going on uh, our hashtag, Morning at NTV. It's at NTV Uganda on Facebook and Twitter. Morning at NTV continues right after this. Are you dreaming of longer and thicker hair? Or of long and natural eyelashes? Try Placent Active Hair Growth products that are suitable for both natural and relaxed hair. Available at all the biggest pharmacies and beauty shops. Coming soon on NTV.